coming to you from Orange County, California. This is the Jug Life Podcast with Max Ada and Chad Wesley Smith. Hey everybody, what is up? Chad Wesley Smith here. Another episode of the Jug Life Podcast. I'm joined as always, pretty much always, by the miracle man, Max Montana. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing well. How are you guys? And our guest today, USAPL 57 Kilo National Champion, Grand Prix Real Champion, Super Total <laughs> Queen, <laughs> Megan Scanlon. Meg, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll obviously talk about your fantastic Arnold performance plenty here, but uh, before we get into all that, let's get to know the woman behind the abs. You know, not just the lifting, but, uh, you know, where, where do you live, where do you train, all that good stuff. How old are you? Oh, yeah, what? Um, so... These aren't answers for me. These are for the people listening at home. So I live right outside of Boston. I am 31 years old. I feel like I'm going on a blind date right now. I love long walks on the beach. Um, Started lifting, powerlifting like three years ago, but before that was doing some marathons and Ironmans. Um, Kind of forget the other questions. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. That works. Excellent, excellent memory. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I knew the Spark Notes version one at a time. <laughs> so now you played you played college soccer, and then okay. uh, yes. so then you know sort of a unique route into powerlifting with the with the Ironmans and the marathons. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, t- tell us about your training for that. I mean, you train like four hours a day for an Ironman or what? So I grew up playing sports, like I feel like a lot of people say, Um, but for the bulk of my childhood, I did gymnastics. So with gymnastics, like if you're, you know, doing competitive gymnastics, you spend probably four hours at the gym. Like, so I was kind of used to that from the get go. And then I did play college soccer and afterwards started running because I felt like my body was built for it. So it was because, a natural progression. Because um, because of your because of your kidding. long legs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, my dad ran. So it was like the only option I knew of outside of like once you graduate college and you can't play sports anymore. Like, what am I gonna do? So I was like, I'll just run. Now, and the, running a half marathon turned into marathons and Ironman. Is is your father? And that also makes sense. Is your father the runner? Does he also have? A body with nope. with stump legs and <laughs> arms so short he can't reach into his own pockets. He does not. Uh, he does have very short legs, but he's built like a runner. Um, he is the exact opposite body type of me. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're kind of built more like a running back than a than a runner. Yeah. But, uh, well, so I'm built for distance. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think that that your, your training history, particularly the, the triathlons and marathons, you know, built up this kind of great work capacity for you to, uh, to do all the hard training you do now? Work capacity, definitely, but also just, I think, uh, like the mental part of it, like mental fortitude of getting through hard sessions, whether they're long or short, it has definitely helped me with. And then it also led me to start lifting with a lot of volume, which I think helped me build like a really good base of strength when I started initially. I didn't just jump like right into heavyweights. I did an insane amount of volume, probably too much volume, but it felt natural. <laughs> Meg, posted, Meg, Meg posted on her Instagram story a few, maybe like a month ago, about <laughs> her resting heart rate uh-huh. and... I was like absolutely floored to see it. Barely alive, right? Yeah, barely alive. Uh, I don't think there's. I can't imagine another person that would have a resting heart rate that low and a triple body weight squat. What What was it? Forty three. Yeah, and that was like I laid down, and it was forty three. It wasn't like in the middle of the night, you know. So I have no idea what it is in the middle of the night. 
but probably very low. I'm going to live forever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> My heart barely beats, so it's, I'm going to live forever. You say that your heart could pump jet fuel up into an airplane. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what spurred the transition from uh, endurance athlete to power lifter? Yeah. Uh, there wasn't like one specific thing. I started training out of a gym that had a lot of lifters in it. So I was kind of my first like, Oh shoot, I can compete in something. I can train for something other than running or triathlons. Um, ironically, I didn't really get into it until afterwards. And it was cause I started lifting heavier and was like, Oh, this is cool to get stronger slash. I feel like I might be better at this. Um, and I ended up doing both for like a year, year and a half, but I hurt my hip running and I couldn't run anymore essentially, but I could still squat and bench. So then I kind of transitioned to just powerlifting after that. And that was just three, three years ago. Uh, that was probably like, that was actually right before about two years ago, I think. Yeah. That was two years ago. Two years ago. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, two years ago. So you started powerlifting two years ago? Well, specifically powerlifting. Okay. Before that, I was running marathons and powerlifting for a year. Okay. When, the first time you kind of went heavy on the squat or bench press, how much did you lift? Well, the first time I, like, in the gym, all right? So I'm not saying, you know, I was getting any white lights here. <laughs> that's not the USAPL probably but I, my squat was maybe 200 and my bench was like 165 I probably could have squatted heavier but it was a little like nervous like I remember putting two plates on the bar for the first time being like yeah I'm the strongest person alive um, but when I competed in my first meet I squatted like 330 and so there was a quick progression there <laughs> yeah but you were quite a bit Yeah, you were like a 72 kilo class lifter then right yeah. I weighed in in my sweat suit. That was the meat I weighed in my sweat suit, yes. Naturally. <laughs> how much, I didn't know that wasn't weird. Do, but you remember, yeah. do you remember how much you weighed? Oh, no. But, Probably like 150. Yeah, I, I, you were in the 72 kilo class, though. And not, not, oh, I was definitely 72, yeah. 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 And not just because of the sweatsuit. Right. Oh no! Yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, it was a, felt, a felt sweat suit. It was wet. So. Yeah. I had, you know, I packed my pockets with some change. Yeah, like, Miss, <laughs> you only weigh sixty three, sixty three point two kilos here. Uh, you know, you don't have to wear that sweatsuit. But uh, <laughs> all right, so you know, I, we first became aware of you at uh, like Orlando Nationals, and. Uh, yeah, you, you set that, that big squat there and, and made your first 500 Wilkes, I believe, and were in that super competitive 63 kilo session. And so that was, what, September or October 2017. And then fast yeah. forward four or five months to the Arnold, and I had seen you, you know, posting some weightlifting videos and and uh, Phil Andrews the the CEO of USA weightlifting had actually come to me for suggestions of powerlifters who I thought could be good at weightlifting and you were one of the names that I that I gave him um, you know along with several several others but I was like well this girl's great at squatting and she has a stumpy body so <laughs> I mean that in the most in the most complimentary way yeah, yeah. <laughs> she looks like she'd be a terrible runner so she must be good at weightlifting um, <laughs> so I'd seen you I'd seen you posting some weightlifting videos and I think I just kind of came up to you in the back at the Arnold and was like I don't know if we'd ever we'd ever met I mean I'm sure he knew who I was because well you know and uh, naturally <laughs> and I, I was like I was like so you're trying to do powerlifting and weightlifting huh and you said something. I was like, "Well, you should probably have Max coach you." And Pretty much. you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So so connected connected you two shortly after the 2018 Arnold, and uh, and yeah, I mean the rest is just a history of uh, a history of PRs. But let's let's hear from the from the coach from the coach first. When you when you first you know talked to Meg and and 
understood what she wanted to do from a super total perspective what what were your first impressions max uh well at first when she first got to me she had an injury so she hadn't been training super hard because her uh, her back was hurt pretty bad um or at least to the point that like squatting was tough and and doing some other things was kind of hard um but the the biggest thing looking at it was like um you know, what, what, what are the pieces that are missing to sort of build that we need to flesh out? If we look at like the super total as like a complete pie, you know, what pieces of that pie have been eaten away or weren't there, didn't exist. And, you know, obviously the weightlifting was like the biggest one. So most of the time to be, to be totally fair too, like most of the time in training, we've done a lot of bodybuilding or a lot of powerlifting stuff, but there's a lot of weightlifting that goes in and there's been a lot of work on, you know, trying to get consistency first in the weightlifting movements. And so we started with, you know, basically like, let's shore up this as much as we can and, and milk that as much as we can with the most simple things. And, and she didn't even actually start like split jerking until about two months ago, maybe three months ago. Um, you know, she was doing mostly power jerks because they were just a little bit more, I don't know if they were more comfortable, but they were more coordinated than her split jerks. Uh, it was like a bench <laughs> press where you're standing up, but uh, your back's not arched. Uh, so, you know, we did some basic stuff like that for the most part. <coughs> tried to try to clean up technique and do that thing, that kind of, you know, whatever the low hanging fruit is. Obviously, in addition to that, it's, you know, like once her back was healthy, we started pushing the, the power lifting more. Um, and made just, you know, basic modifications to the technique she used and try to build up the area she was weak in so that she had, you know, a more, a more comprehensive program. So Meg, what, what is a typical day or a typical week of training look like for you as you, as you balance these two endeavors? I mean, I really just do whatever Max tells me to do. Well, yes. And then, you know, a couple accessories every once in a while. Uh, <laughs> but to be honest, like, I think that it kind of changed throughout the year, especially because, I mean, when I first started, I think, I, I literally think if I went back and I looked, like, the first week, I was, like, high bar squatting 45 kilos because I hadn't squatted in, like, two months. You know what I mean? So obviously that, and I, I was doing like nothing from the floor for a couple of months. So obviously that stuff has changed and kind of like, as I've gotten my strength back, a lot of things I feel like has kind of transitioned. But recently I feel like I have a day where I do clean and jerks, a day where I do snatches, a day where I do both over here. And then I usually like squat twice a week and deadlift once and bench twice a week. You only bench twice a week, really? Yeah. Right now. Yeah, yeah. You only you only back squat it once a week. The last this block, the last two blocks oh, going true. in, right? You back squat it once. You front squat it once as well, but yeah, um, not as much volume in the power lifts this last cycle. So yeah. this is five five training sessions in the week, then, or like five days a week of training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, do you typically split these up into twice a day or anything like that? I try to do it all in one session. The only one I sometimes split up is Monday just because it tends to be longer for me. So like if I have to with my schedule, I'll split it up, but I try to do it all at once. And how, how long is that, that training session typically? Monday? Or just on, <laughs> on average throughout the week? Uh, well, it really depends how distracted I get. I try to keep it to like two, two and a half. All right. Takes me a little while though, because there's secretly two squats in there. Mm. You okay? That's and that, like I get through one, I'm like, yeah, and then I'm like, oh, so yeah, I need a little break, you know, like a snack or something. It's not really secret; <laughs> it's written down in there, but <laughs> yeah, I forget about it though until I like, you know, any, <laughs> anywho, uh, yeah. So that probably takes me like two, two and a half hours. On occasion, I had been known to be in the gym for three hours on a Monday, but. That's only because I'm getting distracted. There's a social, there's a social <laughs> butterfly. Yes. <laughs> so you've done, you've had like two real super total experiences. Let's say you did the five bar showdown yeah. uh, last summer, and that was mm-hmm. that was weightlifting in the morning, powerlifting in the afternoon. 
And yeah. and then, you know, I think what we'll focus on more is this past weekend at the Arnold, you had a super total weekend where you competed in weightlifting on Thursday night and powerlifting on Saturday. So yeah. talking about, you know, putting those, whether it's in the same day or, or in the same weekend, how much more taxing does that feel to you than just doing a powerlifting meet? Good question. Um, I think it's kind of hard to say like whether the day of the day affair was more taxing or like this past weekend, only because when I did the super total in the summer, I also did a powerlifting. I cut down to 57 for the first time the week before. Uh, so that was it, really when I thought Max might be like, yeah, I'm done with you. <laughs> So that, that was oh yeah uh, I remember that so that was seven, that was within seven days you did two powerlifting meets yeah, and, and a weightlifting right. meet it was really poor planning like I'm not gonna lie but it was the only meet that was like somewhere close to me that I had to do <laughs> in my schedule I mean it was my poor planning because <laughs> I waited until last minute to try to qualify as a 57 for nationals essentially. Um, but the day was a long day, but I think it was also long because I had just competed in meet the weekend before. Mm-hmm. The weekend wasn't like didn't feel too taxing having like a weightlifting meet and then the powerlifting meet a couple days later. I think in general the Arnold is a very exhausting weekend just with like the amount of people that are there. Yeah, it's like a like a sensory overload though. Yeah, the whole time. And a lot of stimuli. Yeah. yeah. So I think the weekend of the Arnold is more exhausting, but not necessarily from the two meets. Yeah. The, uh, so you, you mentioned, you know, you did your first meet in the 72 kilo class. Now mm-hmm. you compete, you know, primarily 57 kilos for powerlifting where, where you'll represent, uh, at, at the world championships, 59 mm-hmm. kilos for weightlifting and anyone who looks at you, uh, realizes that you're, you're shredded. You have a lot of muscles that don't have very much fat around them. Uh, what, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing from a from a diet standpoint? Well, that's definitely changed from when I was seventy two. Uh, I think part of it was too. I was like trans- transitioning from all of this endurance activity to lifting, which yeah, I was doing a lot of volume lifting, where you're still not burning the same amount of calories. Um, I don't eat everything that I want anymore. Did, did, you, did you gain a bunch of <laughs> Did you gain a bunch of weight right at the start of that time, going from endurance to to powerlifting, or probably like ten pounds? Yeah, you were like you were like I heard that you're supposed to eat donuts with all your deadlifts and right. stuff like that. And then, yeah. I thought that if I want, I had to be successful, I just had to eat donuts. I told myself the same thing for the last 30, 30 years. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't work out for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm definitely much more careful with my nutrition now. But I think the other thing is, although it's not like my favorite thing to do per se, I also feel a lot better when I'm lifting, when I'm careful with my nutrition and like more 60, 61 kilos than 70, which is a big difference because I'm 5'2". Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like there's, do you feel like doing, because you did powerlifting basically entirely by itself for a little bit of time, do you feel like the energy demands from a weightlifting style workout to a powerlifting style workout, like how different is that for you? And I know a lot of times those workouts are combined, you're snatching before you squat and stuff, but, but you know, what are you, what are your perception or maybe even advice you give somebody from a different, like the different perspective of, you know, how do you fuel yourself for those types of workouts? Um, I mean, it kind of depends. Like if, if it's a longer workout or a shorter workout, and I think sometimes it's hard to differentiate. Like if you do a bench workout, you're not actually using that much energy. Like you don't need to go crazy and carve up for your bench workout, especially if you're, you know, a smaller female, (laughs) typically not benching as much, um, versus like my Monday workout when I'm clean and jerking and squatting twice, um, (laughs) and doing some accessories as well. And I'm in the gym for a while and using a lot of energy, but like for me doing my weightlifting workouts, I don't feel like there are as taxing as when I squat and deadlift right now, just because I'm very much limited by my technique rather than my strength. 
It's like you the, know what I mean? The weightlifting, yeah. I the weightlifting workouts are more... <laughs> <laughs> like, like the weightlifting workouts are more a, a a mind exercise, and the powerlifting is a body exercise. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm like really hoping there's a day that they're a mind exercise and also a body <laughs> exercise in so, the future. I know we all have goals to hit, whether it's eating healthier or exercising more, and sometimes it can be hard to achieve all these goals while struggling with other aspects of life. There's an app that I highly recommend to help you hit those goals a bit easier. It's called Blinkist. Blinkist is the only app that takes the best key takeaways, the need-to-know information from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses them down into just 15 minutes so you can read or listen to them. Blinkist is made for busy people like you, who want to get the main points of books quickly without reading the entire book. With the audio feature, Blinkist makes it easy to finish four books a day just while you're on the go. Eight million people use Blinkist right now, and it has a massive and growing library for self-help, business, health, to history books. I like Blinkist because just while I'm cooking breakfast or something, I can get 15 minutes quick information in. Uh, you know, Maybe I'm just driving around running errands, and so it's so easy to enhance your day, enhance your knowledge in short bursts throughout the day. I've read uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People on there, one of my favorites. They got tons of health and nutrition books like Sleep Revolution on there. So right now for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer for uh, our Jug Life audience. Go to Blinkist.com slash Jug Life to start your seven-day free trial. That's Blinkist, B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T, Blinkist.com slash Jug Life to start your seven-day free trial. Blinkist.com slash Jug Life. So we had a, <laughs> just a, a hugely successful uh, training cycle this this past one. You know, every every week I think, yeah, you know, Marissa and I were seeing their videos and sending each other the links back and forth. Like, holy shit, did you see what Meg did? Did you see what Meg did? So, uh, you know, coach and and athlete, what what do you think? And you know, not that the train cycle before nationals wasn't great too, but but it seems like you got so much great momentum going now. What what would you attribute that to? Uh, from my perspective, I think the biggest thing is just uh, that the training was was adjusted. You know, over the course of the last you know working with her the last year, it's been adjusted more and more to what works for her. Um, we keep dialing in the volume and the, and the training itself a little bit better each time, the right exercises. Um, and then also like something, you know, writing program for, for Meg is a little bit different than, than writing like just a basic program where, you know, one of, one of the big aspects of writing something for a particular person is that as time goes on, you learn a little bit more about how they adapt to the, the, the volume, how they adapt to things. So, you know, you make these adjustments where, you know, uh, uh, she might go four or five weeks before a deload, or there's a different type of, you know, a little bit more loading. Um, we stay in certain ranges longer, just because you know that from experience, you're getting better results from these places. Where, you know, if you had if you had to just explain a program to somebody or create a generic program, it might not have those sort of intricacies to it. So I think that's the big thing in my, from my perspective, um, and also in addition to like, you know her obviously taking on the role of, of a person who's wants to get better and, you know, committing to the technique, committing to things, learning how to do things, um, that maybe are different. You know, I think, I think one really good example is the deadlift with Meg. Like we picked some different exercises that I think helped kind of reinforce some of her, or not reinforce, but eliminate some of her weaknesses, or at least give her the tools to, to be successful in the deadlift. Um, you know, she was so, so, so patient off the floor, being able to just literally stay pulling, continue to pull, even though it looked like for about three minutes, nothing was going to happen. And then finally <laughs> it comes up, um, you know, and that's there, you know, doing some block pulls, really, really heavy block pulls, I think helps facilitate some of that, that, you know, tactile feel and just resilience to be able to do that. Um, in addition to her, you know, being confident enough to stay with that kind of technique and, and make it work for her. So yeah. I'm not sure for her side, but I mean, that, it seems like there's, there's so many moving parts to what, to what you guys got to do because anytime the more, 
elite a competitor becomes, and obviously Meg is, is elite is as elite as it gets for, for powerlifting. Everything has to be more fine tuned to, to milk out that next, you know, whether you're chipping for, for half a kilo records or you know the next two and a half kilos on the total and stuff it's got to get that much more refined and then you put balancing the powerlifting with the weightlifting training then it you know adds another layer of complexity the developing the technique and, and maintaining the movement quality for weightlifting and you know being a powerlifter learning weightlifting rather than a weightlifter learning powerlifting I like that's yeah. another layer of complexity then the body weight manipulation as as we get closer to competition, another layer of complexity. So you know, bravo, brava to both of you for uh, for making that happen so effectively. Um, which brings us to to getting to showcase all of that Saturday, this past Saturday, Rogue Strength Stage Grand Prix presented by SBD with Gino, you know, going ape shit the whole time. But, uh, so let's just, just take, take us through, take us through the day at the, at the Grand Prix. I mean, nine, nine for nine, all PRs, 32 and a half kilo total PR, all that, all that great stuff. But, uh, yeah, just take us through the day. Um, well, I think in general, this is, okay, so sorry, this has nothing to do with the deck, but this is going to get us through the day. All right, this is going to get us through the day. Uh, I think in general, like, a huge thing for me about sticking with weightlifting, like, help it, that has helped my powerlifting is the fact that it's very, like, humbling to me because, well, <laughs> I fail a lot at it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really good at powerlifting, and then I try this thing, and I'm like, wow, I can't do this at all. Even though it's still a strength sport, it's completely different. And, like, in weightlifting, the best weightlifters are very, very good and very, very technical, but they're always looking to get better, technically. And I feel like, I'm like, well, why don't, like, I feel like powerlifters don't necessarily do that. They're just looking to get stronger. And even though powerlifting is way simpler technically, you can still get better technically and put more kilos on the bar. And I feel like in a way it's helped me, like, step back and realize that with my powerlifting as well. If that makes sense. And then on the flip side, like building on the past 10 months, like working with Max, sometimes he puts things in my training and I'm like, well, this man is crazy. And I don't mean exercise, I mean like weights. <laughs> he wants a certain weight and I'm like, I don't think so. Like for a certain amount of reps, but like I've gone through so many weeks of being like, well, that worked, well, that worked, well, that worked. So it's like building up this trust that when I get to the meet, like so when I got to the Grand Prix, I'm like, well, I'm just going to lift whatever he puts on the bar because if Max thinks I can lift it, unless I screw up, I can lift it. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? It does. So, so I show up to the Grand Prix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let's go. So the, the squat, <laughs> American record, 187 and a half kilos. So you now have the, the 57 kilo class American record and the 63 kilo class American record. Do you think you could have lifted 188 kilos? If I didn't put my <laughs> butt on the floor, <clears throat> maybe. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I have a tendency to squat really deep, so I cannot guarantee that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was a, a very impressive a very impressive fight there. Yeah. I, uh, that's definitely something that's new for me, is, and that's definitely mental and confidence under the bar, but being able to grind through some lifts, whereas before, I, that would have definitely been a fail. Do you think, what do you think helped you, like, do you think doing a lot of those really hard top set kind of workouts made a big difference for that during the tr uh, cycle? Yeah, I do. And, like, getting through some of those that I'm like, oh, I don't really think I could do another another rep, but I can. And then almost when you do that rep, you're like, you know what? If someone came up to me and said, could you do another? I'd probably be like, yeah, sure. I might die, but, yeah, I could get through another and like being able to hold the position so much better under the weight has helped me a ton. Yeah, I think that really shows in, you know, when you're talking about patience in the deadlift. Maybe I just hadn't seen as many of your deadlift videos as I had squat because I saw that opener and I was like, 
Oh, well, that that kind of stayed on the ground for a while, and then it then it went. Should have seen her last warm up. <laughs> she did her last warm up, and I think everyone in the back room saw her oh, her one sixty warm up, and was yeah. like, "Oh, oh, well, Meg's Meg's done after her. Yeah. That's over." Well, if they would have seen her last two warm ups and uh, at the weightlifting meet on uh, <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Don't give away the secret. Well, That's really the secret. <laughs> just be all your all your mat a couple days before. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and fun. and to jump quickly back to the weightlifting, that you know, I know we're we're kind of jokingly downplaying your weightlifting here, and and yeah, you're not going to worlds like you are in in powerlifting, but yeah, you, know, you did qualify for for nationals, uh, which is something you know, ninety five percent of of weightlifters in the country are are trying to you know, unsuccessfully trying to do. So, uh, congratulations, congratulations there. So you hit the, you know, you grind through this 187 and a half, uh, squat PR American record in the 63s onto the bench. I mean, your, your bench is, is really, when you see the videos, the most remarkable, like, holy shit, she's just crushing, crushing these heavy benches. And, uh, you opened at your, at your PR, right? Yes. Yeah. So you opened equally in your PR of 107 and a half kilos, 238. Then that looked super easy. 112 and a half, super easy, or 115, super easy. 117 and a half looked super easy as well. Um, you know, to put so much on your, you, you'd benched what 112 before nationals. Uh, no, what 107 was her PR. Like yeah. tra- training or competition. Yeah, uh, you know, I think you might have benched one hundred nine. Yeah, for nationals. Before nationals, yeah, yeah, maybe. But still, to put you know, for a female powerlifter to put nine kilos on their lifetime best or 10, 10, 10 kilo bench PR in a year, in two years, there's probably a, a lot of a lot of women out there, you know, who if they could put ten kilos on their bench in like five years is not an unrealistic thing. And you just did that in one, in one training cycle. Um, you know, was there something that you guys changed about the bench training or anything that made that possible? Simple contacts is the most convenient way to renew your contact lens prescription, reorder your brand of contacts from anywhere in minutes, instead of heading to the doctor year after year, just to renew your prescription for something you wear every day, you can do it on your own time and terms in just a few minutes. This is vision care for the 21st century. You can take the five minute simple contacts vision test online. It'll be reviewed by a licensed doctor. You receive a renewed prescription and reorder your contacts. All you need, all you need is your current contacts an internet connection and 10 feet of space. Even if you're totally out of contacts, they've got an option for you. There are a million things demanding your time and contact lenses shouldn't be one of them. Simple Contacts lets you renew your prescription, reorder your contacts from anywhere in minutes. Your couch, yep, the office, no problem. The doctor's office is now wherever you are. It's designed by ophthalmologists and a licensed doctor reviews every test so you can skip the office visit but not the care. The vision test is only $20. Compare that with an appointment, which without insurance could cost up to $200. The contact lens prices are unbeatable. Standard shipping is free. And best of all, they're offering a special promotion to Jug Life listeners. You can get $20 off by visiting simplecontacts.com slash juglife20 or enter the code juglife20 at checkout. That's $20 off your contacts at simplecontacts.com slash juglife20 or enter code JUGLIFE20 at checkout. Make sure, remember, this is not a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam, but if you are in need of convenience, get $20 off your contacts at simplecontacts.com slash JUGLIFE20 or enter code JUGLIFE20 at checkout. Well, I mean, I don't know what she would say, but I think I think personally the, the two biggest things that have an impact on her bench from, from like an exercise is one – we did a lot of flat back, no arch, feet up, bench pressing, <coughs> flat, yeah, flat back. with with whatever whatever arch you're going to get just by by tightening up your shoulders, um, and then and then a lot of uh, spoto pressing and and just a lot of bench pressing in general. I mean, the volume of bench workouts was pretty high, um, but I, I think that, to me that seemed like it was the biggest thing. She also responds 
really, really well to the bench training. So, I mean, there's certainly a, a, a special case there. I don't know what she would say, but. I think that the bench exercises that we have been doing um, have helped me like learn how to get tighter, better, get tighter, better, get tighter, whatever, you know what I'm going for. Uh, but the other thing that kind of like Max said is what has surprised me the past couple of months, even say like a couple months before nationals when we the so with bench and like the different upper body accessories is I kind of realized that my upper body responds very much like my lower body, uh, in the sense of like, my upper body muscle mass is much more than it was before, well, your, even though I'm lighter. Your arm, your <laughs> armpit muscles so, are exceptional. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I know, right? Yeah. That's the secret. Exceptional uh, armpit muscles. No, but it's pretty wild. Like my upper body responds very well, which I know I don't it think is t- as typical with females. Yeah, I mean, I, I found with with Marissa doing the feet up benching is is a big is a big thing and people see the competition videos and they're like oh it's just this this arch and everything i think a lot of female yeah. lifters become all you know they, they use the arch as a crutch and like that's yeah, great yeah. for competition but you gotta you gotta do the harder work and build and build the muscle too like you can't just arch your way to right. to this great bench yeah and even when i do arch i try to like tell people and i don't think they necessarily believe me uh, but I when I get into my bench position I'm not thinking how can I make my arch as big as possible I'm really thinking how can I get as tight as possible mm-hmm. I just happen to have a huge arch when I do that you know yeah I I I was one of those use the arch as a crutch <laughs> to yeah. the point to the point that I was receiving international praise for my yes. bench press. <laughs> Meg if you do you know who Boris Sheko is Meg yeah. He told Max that Max had the best bench press technique he had ever seen besides Kirill Sarachev, the bench press world record holder. <laughs> and subsequently the weakest bench press of any world <laughs> camp he'd ever seen. Yeah, so the, I'd say the, the ratio of, of bench press technique to bench press strength is a bit askew. Literally, I was all technique. I couldn't lift the bar if I was in the wrong position. It's impossible. <laughs> the... Uh, all right, so then you know, great deadlifting, nine for nine day, all all that, all that uh, good stuff. I mean, you know, I was I was working the numbers for the the mm, IPF yes. formula and shit. You know, texting Max back and back and forth. This IPF formula is a very vexing subject to me, but I don't I don't uh, know all of the details of it well enough to really comment. I just know that. You were the best. You were the best lifter there, but did not win first in the Grand Prix. But uh, yeah, that that was that was frustrating. But as you look forward to Worlds, Jug Squad invading Sweden, eight eight lifters, seven Team USA members, the trio of Open ladies, Golden Girls. I would uh, say, uh, what are your you know what are some goals you have going towards Worlds? Keep answering. I'm gonna. I gotta go grab my charger real quick. But answer, even though I'm not here. Uh, I mean, my number one goal is to obviously to win. Uh, well, that's the <laughs> most fun. that has to happen. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm going into it with the same mindset that I have for nationals and the Grand Prix, which is just to show up and do what I can on the day and not worry about anyone else. And Max will put on the bar we need. Right? That's the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and not freak out when they call how much weight is on the deadlift bar for my last deadlift. Mm. Which I didn't. A little nervous about that, but I didn't. <laughs> after, after having done this meet and done those numbers, do you feel like, and looking back on those lifts when you see them in videos, do you feel like there was more? Obviously, probably the squat's a, uh, probably a no, but like, I was... The, the one lift out of all three <coughs> that I that I the one lift out of all nine that I was most unsure of whether or not you'd make was the 117 bench press, which exactly. ended up being the easiest of all the lifts only yeah. because, you know, with the bench, like I didn't know if it was just going to hit a wall. And I knew I knew you have an incredible ability to grind through 
bench presses. I mean, it wasn't like that. It was just like, well, it's a big number. Let's see how it feels. Maybe there's something taken out of it. Um, but as you deadlifted and squatted, I, I knew there was more there. I knew you could go through those. Was well, there any one lift in that whole thing that you think like, oh, yeah, there's I left so much on the platform that it'll be easy to make big progress just by taking bigger lifts at that uh, world's? I mean, the one that on that day, I would let, I'll take a fourth attempt, would have been bench. But I also almost told Max to put 115 on the bar. So. Because he never helped, <laughs> like he never attempted yeah. 117 in any. No, actually, this is kind of a fun fact. All of those weights, I've never actually, I mean, even if it was like a half kilo, like this, I did 187 in the gym. So it was like half kilo more, you know, but like I'd never done any of those weights before. Which like is kind of a cool thing. That's never happened to me. That's that's the that's the way it's supposed to be. You got to do it yep. most when it when it actually counts, not leaving them in the yeah, gym. I know. It can't be a mental case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was like a big like you know, I'm yeah. growing up, stepping stone. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm very <laughs> much I'm very much looking forward to Sweden. I'm looking forward to to seeing your your progress as we as we move towards that hopefully we get a little training camp here in southern california uh leading up to that um yeah meg where can people uh follow you on social media and all that stuff mostly i'm on instagram at med scan lift very clever so very clever nice and simple m-e-g-s-c-a-n-l-i-f-t well try and put it on the screen or something like that um you know people living in the greater boston area if they need a personal trainer they could hit you up for that holla, too huh holla at your girl <laughs> and, and you do some you yeah, do some online that, that was actually weird please don't holler at your girl but uh <laughs> there's actually a ton of powerlifters out here that it's fun we get together so if there, anyone is in the boston area holler at me in a non-creepy way well, and I'll respond. <laughs> I hope they go for more of the creepy way of hollering. Those are that's more entertaining for me to hear about after the fact. <laughs> there, Marissa, Marissa sent me a, a video in which a guy had made had like auto tune this this rap, and all the lyrics were uh, like DMs sent by like Indian guys to to girls. <laughs> it, I gotta find it again. It was fucking incredible. <laughs> it was absolutely that incredible. Awesome. Uh, Max, where can they follow you, bud? You can find me on uh, Instagram, Max underscore Ada, on Facebook, or email me at maxjtsstrength.com. All right. If you're interested in uh, online coaching, powerlifting, weightlifting, super total, so you can aspire to be like like Meg, uh, power building, all that stuff, jtsstrength.com has all the info. We have options for every level. Um, we've got, you know, the, the powerlifting AI coaching. If you, you know, follow hashtag Chadbot on Instagram, you know, if you follow me or what you probably do, if you're listening to this, you're seeing it in the story all the time. People turn in their one rep max into five rep maxes. Uh, this summer we'll have that for, we'll have weightlifting AI following that we'll have super total AI. So be on the lookout for all of those. Get in on the beta pricing on them while you can. Um, yeah, follow, you know, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube, leave us a five star review. We always appreciate that. Miss Mrs. Scanlon, thank you for uh, for joining us. Congratulations again on the awesome lifting, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. All right.